How's it going, my fellow nerds? Welcome to the Q&A video. In today's video, I got 27 questions for you that are gonna give you some good answers as to what this channel is all about. So let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, what is your name and your age? So my name is John, which I usually go and introduce inside of the very beginning of the videos, that way you guys always know. Now for my age, I'm gonna leave that up to you to take a guess inside of the comments on what you think my age is gonna be, because I'm gonna leave that as a mystery. Now if you know me in real life, you don't have to answer this. <laughs> you can, <laughs> but you don't have to. Number two, what does the name of your channel mean? So the nerd sanctum means the nerd cave. Sanctum is another word for cave, basically. Why did you start a YouTube channel? So this is not my first time doing a YouTube channel. I do have another channel called Creovox, which is more of learning about live streaming and a bunch of mature type games like Halo and Battlefield and stuff. Um, but I wanted to create another channel to kind of showcase who I am as a nerdy person, you know, different things that I'm really interested in, but not all of the things that I'm interested in, just some of the more dominant things, I guess I would say, that are more of my interests. What is your channel going to be about? So I'm going to be doing a heavy focus on trading card games because that is something that I really have a passion for. And Pokemon is going to be the big one that you're going to find on the channel. But I'm also going to do some sprinkling of some other ones. Um, so like, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh, Cardfight Vanguard, and probably a few others. Um, I also want to kind of touch on some of my collectibles. I have a lot of different types of collections, but I live in a one-bedroom apartment. So it's really impossible for me to actually take that stuff out and then display it and everything. So I can actually take them out of the boxes that I have them in and then kind of display the collections and then put them back into the boxes, sadly. Um, but I only have this bookshelf behind me that I can only put stuff on. So above it, which you guys can't see, is going to be a bunch of uh, Funko Pops and Tsum Tsums and a few other things. Uh, I got like some posters and stuff. I have the uh, functional fridge here. I picked up these guys uh, today. And then um, over on the rest of this stuff is like all my cards. Well, at least some of them. I got some some card games there, some uh, other cards. And then video games are up there and a bunch of other stuff around. So I can't really display a lot of stuff. But when we get out of this one bedroom apartment into a house, I'll have a dedicated room where I can display all of the stuff. And I cannot wait for that. But, you know, baby steps working towards that. Um, let's see. Who is your target audience? I would say 13 and up, but more than likely it's going to be 18 and up um, just because of the type of content that it's going to be. Let's see. What do you think that you could get out of here flying? What do you think that you could bring to the YouTube community that isn't already there? Honestly, I'm not trying to compete with other channels. I'm just making this a personal channel of my own, sharing my nerdy interests with other people, sharing whenever I go to conventions, when I go to Disney or Universal or any other type of nerdy things that my wife and I like to do, you know, be able to share that stuff with both family who wasn't able to go. And it's just a great thing for us to look back on and kind of archive it. What do you hope to achieve with your channel? Honestly, just sending out positive vibes to everybody and just giving a place where people can kind of see booster openings and talk about things that are just really nerdy, um, you know, kind of revisiting stuff in the 90s and you know, just kind of talking about those things and sharing experiences, you know, just being able to share things that people might not be able to go to or not be able to see or might not be able to buy and stuff like that. And just letting them get a, a look at it. If I make somebody laugh or someone smile, then I've done my job. All right, let's see. Uh, number eight, if you could collaborate with anyone right now, who would it be? So I got three. They're all Pokemon tubers. Uh, or PokeTubers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we got the real Breaking Nate, Leonhart, and the Frosted Caribou. Uh, Frosted Caribou was um, someone new that I just stumbled across, I think, like two weeks ago, and I'm loving her content, absolutely loving her content. I definitely recommend you guys checking out all three of these. Number nine, what are your favorite things to do? So this is kind of hard to figure out because there's a lot of things I like to do. I guess I guess my top things would be going to conventions, cosplaying, doing some type of arts and crafts, whether that is painting, digital art and Photoshop, messing around in Illustrator, traditional drawing. Um, there's a lot of different things, uh, prop building and stuff like that. Like I, I love being able to be very crafty. 
Um, then of course, streaming, being able to hang out with friends and stuff across the world, playing video games with family and friends. Those are always fun. Number 10, uh, three things that we should know about you. One, this is just a hobby for me. Two, I do work a full-time job. And three, uh, I'm a vegan. All right, so moving on to question number 11. Is this your first video ever recorded? Nope, because I have another channel. <laughs> number 12, are you used to speaking uh, to a camera? So I am now, but before when I started you know, doing YouTube, I was bad. I was like really bad at it. Very monotoned. Uh, didn't know how to get my personality across. It was just, it was really bad. But the more you do it, the better you get at it. And eventually you just feel very comfortable. Um, the one thing I will say though is think of the camera as you're talking to a friend or you're talking to a wall or you're talking to a mirror and it doesn't talk back and that's perfectly fine. That's the best way to look at it. Let's see. Number 13, how often do you plan to publish videos? Every Friday, I plan to upload at least one video. Now, you might see more videos upload throughout the week if I have time to make them or if there's something that I'm trying to get out to you guys in a very quick fashion. Um, so that way you guys have everything you need uh, right there out of the gate. But I'm going to try to balance both channels. Now, the first channel that I have is doing very well with me not being consistent on uploads. So I can start putting a little bit more focus onto this channel and start getting you guys some uploads and start getting some traction to the channel and everything like that. So I can even them out a little bit. Do you see yourself being on YouTube for a long time? Yes, I definitely want to make this be just as much of a priority as the first channel because this is a reflection of who I am and I want to be able to share that with friends, family, and other people across the world and try to make some friendships with them as well and give them a space for them here in the interwebs. Let's see, why should people follow your channel for question number 15? Honestly, it's a matter of preference. Uh, when it comes to you know, figuring out why people should follow a channel. I mean, it's it's not like I'm going to try to make content for everybody because there's so much about who I am and about my nerdy side that it just it's impossible for me to put all of it into one space without trying to like pick at every single type of audience out there. And it's just impossible to do that. So some of the things that you will definitely see on here primarily, you know, you're going to see TCG, you're going to see collectibles, you're going to see events and me going to conventions and just capturing those things for people to be able to see if they're not able to go to it and everything like that. And uh, maybe I'll have discussions about different shows in the 90s that are getting recirculated around for the newer generation and stuff like that. You know, I can talk about what it was like when I used to watch XYZ show or where I used to play XYZ game and stuff like that. So it's it's a little bit of everything that I feel is going to benefit. So TCG, collectibles, events, and discussions. That's the easiest way for me to break it down. Are you going to be showing your real personality or a character? So I'm going to be showing you guys who I really am, which is what I'm showing you right now. You know, I am a very goofy person. I can be very laid back and chill. Or I could be extremely obnoxious. It just matters on one, the day, two, what we're talking about, and three, how I'm feeling. <laughs> but I never, I never put on a character because that's just exhausting to have to always be that character. Just be yourself. If people can't accept you for who you are, you don't need them. It's as simple as that. You don't need them. Number 17, do you have pets? Yes, I have two. I have two dogs. I have a little... Chihuahua Shih Tzu mix and his name is Loki. He's five years old. And then I have a Jack Russell Terrier who they say is mixed with Chihuahua. She looks like a forever puppy miniature lab and uh, we call her Khaleesi. Where are you from? I am from the north, but I live in the south. I won't tell you guys where. So ha. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what are your talents? So I'm really good with artistic stuff. So lots of arts and crafts. I'm very good with technology. I'm really good at breaking those things down. I'm very good at problem solving. So I love puzzles. Um, I think I'm good at voice acting, but I haven't really tried to like put that out there for anybody to really determine if I'm good at that. But um, talents, I think those are pretty much it. Mostly artistic and good with technology because everyone comes to me about tech stuff. <laughs> 
All right, question number 20. What is your favorite animal? So I got two. Well, one's not real. So the real animal would be a dog. The mythical one is dragon. Uh, let's see. What is your favorite movie of all time? Star Wars Episode Four. That is a very hard question for me to answer, by the way, because there's so many, so many. Uh, let's see. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? This kind of matters on the situation. So normally I'm an introvert. I like to keep to myself unless, you know, someone needs me for something. But it just matters on the situation. So if I'm doing a public speaking, if I'm doing a panel or if I'm going to be having people come to me for something like a meetup or something like that, I have no problems being an extrovert because it's it's something that people are coming towards. Right. Or, you know, I'm providing a service for somebody. Now, when it comes to me needing to network with a company or something, I'm like scared in my boots. I, I never know how to approach. I never know how to feel confident when it comes to that. And that's something that I still need to learn. But that's just because growing up, I was always moving around. I was always having to start over. And you would think with something like that, it would be easy at that point. Unfortunately, not because, you know, you're the new kid. It's very awkward. And, you know, people are snickering about you. And it's just it's just really eat at you or just eats at you and it kind of turned me into an introvert growing up and stuff like that so I just always kept to myself uh, let's see what's your best achievement so I have two uh, in 2019 I think it was for both of them either 2018 for one of them or 2019 for both but I was a guest streamer for dream hacks and that is a convention where they have a lot of esports and shoutcasters going on and they had like a bunch of big and small um, streamers from different platforms like Mixer when it was around. And you had, I think Facebook Gaming had some there, but it was mostly like Twitch and a little bit of YouTube streamers. And we were all in this area where people can come around and just sit there and watch the screen and they can interact with us while we were live streaming and stuff like that. They could sit down on some chairs and watch different streamers and everything like that. We had like a an amazing setup of all different types of things. And just being able to have that opportunity to be able to be a guest streamer. I was supposed to be also a guest streamer again for DreamHack, but COVID, so couldn't do it. Super bummed. But the other achievement was I was able to go to the Halo Outpost Discovery as a media. And being able to go as media was so cool because we were able to get into things before anybody else. That way I didn't have to worry about anyone getting in my footage or anything like that. But it was so cool. Now, for those of you guys who are coming from my other channel, you guys know how much I love Halo and how I'm excited for the new Halo and how I was really excited to be able to go to Halo Outpost Discovery. I have a bunch of videos on my time there on my other channel, the Creovox channel. So you guys can definitely check that out. Uh, but those would be my two biggest achievements for sure. Uh, let's see what kind of TCG content do you do? So Pokemon is going to be the biggest. So you're going to see a lot of Pokemon content on here and then a little bit of sprinkling of some other ones like Yu-Gi-Oh card fight Vanguard and then maybe, maybe some magic, maybe, but, um, those would be like the two primary or yeah, two primary. And then I guess the additional sprinkle would be uh card fight Vanguard. Uh, let's see what started your passion for card games. Whoa. This goes way back. So uh, back when I was youngster, I was a youngster in the late 90s and my parents got me into Pokemon trading cards. So they bought a lot of the structure, uh, structure decks, the um, booster packs, and they even had the book that showed you how much the cards were worth. So they wanted me to enjoy opening up packs but to also understand that you want to save these and keep them in good condition. I still have my original Pokemon cards from back then, and they are still in very good condition. I just recently transitioned them over to a new binder. So maybe I'll show you guys my binder for that if you guys are interested. Um, but that is what got me into Pokemon or not Pokemon. That's what got me into uh, trading card games. And then that kind of transitioned into other trading card games. What inspired you to start a TCG channel. So originally I was just going to do only TCG, but then I thought about, well, there's some other things that I might want to add on here. So TCG will still be the heavy thing, of course, 
but maybe I want to add some other stuff to it. And now it came into the nerd sanctum. So now it's just kind of like a reflection of who I am as a nerd and then sharing that stuff with you guys. And then the last question is, oh, I almost read the 26. Last question is, do you have any tips or advice for any others who are just starting a YouTube channel? Yes. So one, don't go and think you need a lot of equipment. All you got to do is get your smartphone, go and get yourself like a $50 blue snowball, plug it into your computer and start making videos. You don't need a lot of equipment. You just want to make sure you have good audio and if you can, good visual. Um, you guys can download a free software for your audio. It's called Audacity. And you can also get a free editing software known as DaVinci Resolve. All this stuff's free. And it's going to make your content creation so amazing. Now, for thumbnails, you can use something like GIMP or I think it's called uh, Canva is another one where you'll be able to do stuff like that. But GIMP is like a free version of Photoshop. Or you can get Photoshop for $9 a month by using the uh, Adobe Cloud and then just kind of learning how to use Photoshop. But just create content. Don't worry about trying to make it big. Don't worry about making money or anything like that. Just create content for the fun of it. Always do it for the fun of it. If you start thinking about money, then you start worrying about everything and it just it, it definitely reflects in your videos for sure. So just do this because you enjoy it and do it because you want to have fun sharing it with your friends and family. But that's about all I can really suggest starting off. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out in the q and I know it's pretty been pretty long, so I do appreciate you guys being here. If you have any, ad any other additional questions, I can't get this out. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon and click the all so you guys can make sure you get every notification when I upload a video but I will see you guys in a future video make sure you follow me also on my social medias which you'll find inside the video description below and I will talk to you guys all soon take care and thank you again